you like to come back as an animal? If you're coming back as a pet, as livestock, can I recommend you consider being a champion coursing greyhound? The massaging, the praise, and the sheer blooming enjoyment of doing your thing. If you want to come back as a wild animal, it has to be a hare born somewhere the locals enjoy coursing. You get to live in parks especially designed for you. You get wormed and a full healthcare plan. And all you have to do is race up a 420 yard field and occasionally outmaneuver some muzzled dogs. I have come to a field in Kilkenny in Ireland to watch the English Invitation Stakes Champion Cup, where English greyhound enthusiasts have come to pit their dogs against each other. Liz Hall and Jackie Teal are owners and trainers from Yorkshire, who have had four Waterloo Cup winners between them. Well, I, I inherited my interest from my parents, who were quite keen on coursing, and circumstances just swept by. I was never that interested in the training of it of them, but just family circumstances. I ended up doing it really. You become passionate about it. Well, it's, it's the dogs and what your achievement when you put so much work into them and they and the, the go out and win. It's just a, a good spot and the dogs hopefully give you back, give you back what you put into it. Um, you, you love your dogs, so yeah, that's, oh, dogs, it's, it's yeah. a space. It's that's basic. what it's all about. I mean, when, they, when they retire, they all get rehomed. Right. Um, so. So, yeah. Is it about the, so it's more about the dogs than about you, really? <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. There is plenty of silverware on offer here and some keen owners chasing it. I got two in the, in the final. <laughs> you both of yours are in the final. <laughs> Please don't record that. <laughs> that's good, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm, try, I'm trying to be modest. <laughs> have, you, um, have you won English stakes here before? Uh, I've been a bridesmaid an awful lot. <laughs> And the, the answer is, not really. <laughs> yes, I, we used to when we started. And then we had a bad patch. There is a big difference between coursing and greyhound racing. Here's a trainer who trains both. Uh, obviously coursing, it's, it's, there's only two dogs and the best dog you know, t tends to win uh, on the track. There's, a, there's six dogs or should be six dogs and there can be a lot of uh, hard luck stories on the track. While they are here, the English enter their dogs in other stakes. Aaron Atmore has been training an old dog called Fond Memories, who's out for the last time as, you might call, a professional athlete. Most of the course in Greyhounds have go to the third season perhaps, and he's already on his fifth, so he's an OAP in effect, but he's still as keen as Mustard and, and he's qualified and he deserves his place. The fact he's here, the fact he's qualified and, and won a stake to get here is, is probably more than the owners could hope for. He's won a, a huge number of stakes in his time. Um, he's been a great dog for him and uh, it's basically swan stomp, so. <laughs> First up, the dog gets a proper rub down with special oils. He's got eucalyptus in. Some people make their own. Some people buy greens, rub is a popular one. I hate the stuff, it burns my hands. So I use this, it's called Professional's Choice and I just mix one or two other bits in with it. And they have uh, the coursing muzzles. Um, these have been developed by the ICC. You have to have a leg, the current one, you can see it's stamped there. That's for a bitch, that's for a dog. It's just slightly longer. You can see the, the extra piece on, that's the only difference. It's designed to not, obviously, damage the dog, but also, should they get near a hair, just to not allow them to hurt it, you know, to bounce off and, uh, protect both the dog and the hare so it's uh, when they first come in perhaps contentious but I think nothing but positive um, for the sport so this dog will be a pet eventually but he's a working dog his whole function has evolved over thousands and thousands of years to become the ultimate sight hound he hunts his eyesight is the prowess, the way that the muscles work, the way that the whole structure of this dog is evolved, has evolved 
is to hunt by sight, to course prey, and the, the hare is its natural quarry. There is a beautiful balance as well. The, the hare has speed, but it also has agility, and it has endurance, where these are absolute speed masters. So these will close very, very fast on the hare. And at the last moment when you think all's lost for the hare, the hare can turn within its own body length, and these dogs vastly overshoot. They might go 10 yards, 12 yards, 20 yards past, gather those cells, compose themselves, and run again at the hare. Uh, and every time the hare jinks again, getting more valuable space until it's reached its cover. And once these dogs can't see because they've hunted by sight, then the, the course is over. And as you can see, the average course here today would be in the region of 12 seconds. Um, now, it doesn't sound a lot, but it's, it's a very thrilling 12 seconds to see the pace and the agility and the speed of not just the dogs, the hares, and, and the distance covered. The, the field here is about 420 yards long, um, and they're covering that distance in, in a very short space of time, showing real pace. When Aaron gets to the start, the steward checks the dog's ID card. On the front, the fond memories, the earmarks, the registration, the volume of the stud book it's in, various details, and then it's markings. They're done by steward PJ Roberts, who's actually here today, did this one. Uh, you can see the name of the dog. It's a brindle dog, the date it was whelped, the sire, grand sire and grand dam, the dam and the details there. The original owners were Tommy's Legacy Syndicate, um, it was changed on the 6th of June, Douse and Danny Begging here. Uh, that's under the National Coursing Club in England. This is the Irish Coursing Club. Um, and every time we go up, we show this so that they know that it's actually that dog going in. It is a passport, yeah, it's an ID card, and it ensures that that dog continues to run. Obviously, it'd be quite handy if you could just change it around in a second round for another one. So it uh, avoids all that, uh, and that stays with the dog everywhere. The exciting moment comes and fond memories steps out for what will probably be the last time. I was beat down here and all the way up and um, as, I, as anticipated, I mean, you know, it's, like I said, it's done great to be here, I'm just... It was very close. Right? It was close enough for him, but he, a bitch of that age and that quality against uh, an all-timer like him. The years tell and the, the work tells, so, but that was good, that was great. You can see him coming off now, we have a heap of people up there catching up for us, so they'll bring them back down and then we'll start working on washing them down, cleaning them, rubbing them down. I always went coursing, I was always involved in the slipping, and I was involved in the slipping because there's only <laughs> the slipper actually coursing. Everybody else is watching. He's got the dogs. He's got the, the hair. He's assessing the hair, making sure it's a good hair, making sure that he's got everything going for it to test the dogs to the full and make sure it escapes. And um, he, as I say, he's so integral to it. Um, it's one of the greatest thrills of my life when you're walking out with a dog and the dogs are there and the hair's been passing, it's a good hair, and you're moving forward and you're trying to get the beat of the dogs going, you're watching the hair all the time and you're feeling the dogs through the slips. And at the moment you just get to that point when you've got enough law and the dogs are running with you and you just drop that barrel and the leather eases out and flush. And the pace, you're running as you let them go and they're gone. In two or three paces, these dogs are up to 35 mile an hour, 40 mile an hour. And that is just stunning. And to see them home in on the hair and then like I said, that last minute, that jink, and a boosh past, and the hair just swing on and go straight to its escape. The crowd loves it. There's the same passion for dogs here as there is for horses at the races, and they're firmly on the side of the hair. Here's what happens when a dog gets too close. Jason Doyle, who presents our Field Sports Ireland show, is here, and he did most of the filming for this piece. He doesn't understand how the British government got coursing so wrong. And there'll be government officials here, there'll be government vets here. It's all very well regulated, but I mean, coursing has been going on so long here, and it's, I mean, it's proven to benefit the hare population. Um, areas that are managed for coursing have uh, an awful lot more hares than areas that aren't, and that's that's proven by independent scientific studies. The greatest thrill is when it's your dog that's running. Here is an owner watching his dog. 
Whoops, he's behind. Oh, he's well beat here. You can tell that already. Yeah. Oh, I knocked him at it! Good boy! Good boy. That's the boy. Come on, get her home now. Good boy, get her home. Let her home. Let her home. Good boy. Yeah. Survived again. Just tell me what happened now. Yeah, we were just seemed to be left uh, coming away from slips and uh, he just seemed to get his, 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 his gears in at midway and just ran real well now, yeah. Did you reckon he won that one? Yeah, yeah, he did well, yeah. Did well, did really well, yeah. Yeah, we're thrilled. The English have to cross the Irish Sea because Tony Blair banned coursing in England and Wales from 2005. Tony Blair only restricted hunting with hounds. He prohibited coursing. Yet coursing is good for hares. Research by Queen's University Belfast shows that where there is coursing, there are 18 times as many hares. It seems a strange thing to a lot of conservationists or people who are against coursing, but we actively conserve hares, whereas a lot of people talk a good story. Um, and it's in our interest to make sure that conservation measures go. We have the landowners on our side as well, which is really important to ensure that there's set aside, that there's places and feed for hares, that the farming practices encourage high hare numbers and that obviously then encourages a whole other, a plethora of flora and fauna that uh, benefit from that conservation measure. We joined the team in charge of hare welfare at Seven Houses. They're all tagged, they have the tag numbers, the lads put in their hands here and they just pull up the ear and they read the tag number and I have my book then and they have Good, very good, no good, yeah. or offline, Miller. offline, no slip. Have you given them names? Uh, the boys, the young lads have names yeah. on some of them, yeah. <laughs> what's, what's a typical name for hair? A uh, white You, 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 you could have a white, white face, you could have a white arse, <laughs> you could have a curse in his ear, stuff like that, do you know what that is? Yeah, they used to have a... Can we call one Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> no good. <laughs> uh, they're dosed uh, for, for worms and, and fluke when they come in. Yeah. And um, the feed, the feed. Do you have anything down for the feet and the, the, the feet? We do. The, yeah. the, the, the dip their the oh, feet. Dip. Until, um, it's quite often they put a sponge in a bath, yeah. a place yeah. they have to run through, so that then when they run over, they're cleaning the feet. Because yeah. the feet get a lot of. You get a lot of little injuries around the feet, and if they go septic or something, you can set the, them right back. So by doing that, you're just keeping them clean. Old clubs used to put a bit of lime down, didn't they, as well, so they walk through the lime, just to get rid of any of that. But the, but the feed you're giving them as well is, um, they'll get shaves. Sheaves, old sheaves. Old yeah. sheaves, and they'll hang those, because they naturally like to stand up and eat. That's right, yeah. So they'll hang them up on the With their heads in on the knees. up at the top, you'll see that, and then they'll put the sallies in now. Yeah. Sallies are, are basically a willow and they eat the bark off that. So how do they catch the hares in the first place? Hares will always go for a gateway. So you set nets on the gates, and then the lads come along to hunt out the fields, and the hare, will, the hare won't run for the ditch, he'll go straight for the gate. We'll catch them like I say, and then they'll bring them here, and then they dose them as they put them in and tag them, so we've got a record of where they come from, yeah. where they're netted, and then at the end of this meeting, the wildlife officer, he'll check he'll out the numbers. And he'll come with us and monitor, release them. And he'll go yeah, and release them back. back. You've got nine there, and you've got seven there, and you've got whatever. Yeah. It might not be the same nine go back on purpose no, for, to make sure that the, then you're mixing the blood up. So they're not inbreeding all the yeah. time. You've got yeah. that. Yeah. You, you're creating a stronger line. Yeah. By, the cousin's not breeding yeah. with his cousin. Back to the coursing, and the hares are running well. Better than the dogs. The judge announces the winner. He's looking for a first turn or good speed. In the event of a straight up with no turn, you judge it on the dog that shows the most superior speed, leads most of the way. Um, I'd have a mark, most judges would have a mark on the other side of the field about 20 yards out, so the course would be over by then. If they do turn, are you looking for the first turn or the strongest turn? The first to turn the hair, yeah. First to turn. The first to turn the hair yeah. is basically the winner? Yes. Okay. And if they turn it a couple of times, does that make a difference? No, not in, not in the park meeting. Open coursing now would be different. Um, so we just judge on the first turn. When the hare is safely through and into the park, a white flag goes up. Do the hares suffer from stress and depression like city workers? No, they don't. When they're being horsed and they're put back in in the evening time, yeah. you go up there the next morning 
and see what they're after eating. Yeah. So they're settled down. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't put them off their food like. It's exactly the same as being in the wild. If a fox chases them, they don't then just run round bam yeah. for hours. As soon as the, the, the chase is over, they go back to doing exactly what they was before. It's natural for them. That's why yeah. they're still here. Muzzling the dogs was not popular among the Irish when they adopted it in 1994, but it has saved coursing. And there's an important distinction now in the Irish countryside. You see an unmuzzled dog chasing hares in a field, someone's poaching. I wasn't fired originally, but without the muzzle, we wouldn't be here today. Coursing has a long and illustrious history. The Grand National Horse Race in Aintree was set up as a diversion for people going to Coursing's Waterloo Cup. They put up bronze statues to winning dogs in market town centres. How would, you, how would you describe a Waterloo Day? Oh, the bad to anything else. Well, for an Irishman, it's the best winter holiday ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was an annual holiday. The year just got off in 2003, I think. It's like a death in the family. So, we're more saddened by the Waterloo cut off, we would be about death in the family, I'm telling you. Lads went, lads went that night. The, fall, the first night they were meant to go, and they went, the news cut off, and they went on the board. It's our holiday, they said. And the English were great, beyond. We, we got great respect for the English. And, the banter was unbelievable. Any horse racing courses with the word park in them, Kempton Park, Haydock Park, were originally for coursing. All knockout competitions with 64 starters, such as Wimbledon Lawn Tennis, are based on the Waterloo Cup. So how do you take up coursing? It'd be pretty easy to get into it, wouldn't it, Liz? Oh, yeah. yeah. How, how do I come along and watch something? Do I just turn up the game? Yeah. That's, that's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we rejoin Sally to see how she does in the final of the English Stakes. It's difficult from this angle to see who's leading. I think she is. Good girl. You can't from here tell. Oh, great. brilliant. A little bitch, that's really good news. I'm absolutely thrilled. We got her from the Dibbley's last year. I bought her uh, at about this time last year from them. And she's been gradually improving the whole of, of the coursing season. Jackie rated her, Jackie the trainer rated her. I actually thought the dog was the better bet, and she's won. And in my preference, I would always love to see a good bitch coursing because they sort of get down and they really work, and I love watching them. If you want to get involved with coursing, look up your national coursing club on Facebook and find out about upcoming meetings. It's just nuts that Tony Blair banned coursing. Those animal lovers that voted for it, they must have really hated hairs.